Hello there, my name is Kyle and today I will be helping you understand LibPF. So let's get started with the first question. What is LibPF? So LibPF is a C library, which can be found in GitHub in this page. But not only that, you can find a full overview in their own documentation. Reading straight from it, LibPF is a C-based library containing a BPF loader that takes compiled BPF object files and prepares and loads them into the Linux kernel. So, to start, libpf manages ebpf project files and places them straight into the kernel. It is not used for backend or ebpf app creation. You can think of libpf as a professional deployer of ebpf bytecodes straight into your kernel. So, why should you use ebpf? There are three main reasons that I've found out and there are the reasons why it's used in Honey Potion. First up, it has a very simple interface, requiring only the knowledge of three or four functions to use properly. It is extremely well documented, at the very least in this site, and it supports Cori, which they call Compile Once Run Everywhere. You can find more about it over here in their GitHub, and a few more links can be found here, in case you would like to study how to compile your application once and allow it to run in any sort of kernel of Linux. I believe this is only supported in newer versions, but please check the documentation for more details. Great, now we understand what is libpf and also why we should use it over other frontends. So how do we set up and use libpf? Well, the setting up is already explained in one of my videos. You can find it in the description, in the pinned comment, or even just by going to my Honey Potion Guides playlist, which can be found in my YouTube channel. This video does teach you how to install libpf in the newest version, but does so in a bit of a complicated way. In case you would like a libpf that is straight in your package manager, please have a look into this list in their GitHub to check if their version is up to date with your standards. In case you require something of newer versions, you might require to follow my guide instead of picking it up from your package manager. Otherwise, feel free just to do your apt-get or whatever else is your package manager. For example, Pacman for Arch or I believe Yum in the case of Fedora and other distributions like them. So, great. As a C library, you can find it in a few places. First up, most C libraries are kept in this directory unless they are specific to your user. And if you pick up from your package manager or if you follow my guide, you will be finding it in USR include, the include files, and in lib, the libraries, which have to be included with the minus lib or whatever that is required for your specific library. More on that will be given in the example section at the end of this video. Great. To compile a program with libpf, you do require to add the libraries of libpf and of its dependencies. At the very least, sometimes those are needed. So, how do you do that? First up, I recommend that you create a makefile as you're dealing with C compilation. In the moment of using libpf, you will be creating a binary that handles the object file or any sort of object that you wish to put into the kernel. In our case of Honey Potion, we are dealing with a file and we also have to add the libraries straight into the binary that picks up that file and puts it into the kernel. Over here, you can see that in the process of creating the binary that uses libpf, we add the libs uh, variable. And the libs variable has minus lbpf, lf, and lz. Minus lbpf is libpf. Minus lf and minus lz is for libelf and libz, which are dependencies of lbpf. I am not sure if all programs need these, but the programs that have them have always worked for me. You can see, for example, that I am including libpf here, so the libpf library is a must for things to work well. So, finally, how do we use libpf in practice? You need the knowledge of four functions the open, the load, the attach, and finally the destroy. There are many ways to do it. The way that I will be teaching you uses skeletons, and these skeletons you can find out more in the libpf documentation. So, for example, if we go to the overview, we can find out somewhere here, let's see, 
a BPF object skeleton file. These simplify a lot the usage and you can create skeleton files and you can create skeleton files very easily with BPF2, which you can also find in GitHub in the same project. So great. Supposing that you already have the skeleton file, it will be giving you a few very easy functions to use. The open that I mentioned before here, the load, the attach, and the destroy. So now let's study what each of them does. If we go to the documentation, we can see that libpf takes care of the heavy lifting of three steps, loading, verifying, and attaching BPF programs. The loading part of it and the verifying part of it is mostly done at the open, where it will be picking up that file, studying that file, and seeing if it is a valid eBPF application. And then it is loaded using the load function so that it is ready to be attached into any place that you wish. Finally, during these processes, you can also change some settings. However, some settings cannot be changed after attaching, so you have to make sure to do them now. You can check some examples in our Honey Potion project. More specifically, our examples in the Honey Potion project can be found in the examples lib folder. And the make file, for example, is here. And you can find the examples after compilation, which you should run in the source. You can see any of these examples, and some of them do require some changes. For example, the networking related ones. With that said, the open and the load are the steps which will be opening and loading. But finally, we need to attach it somewhere so that it starts executing. That last step is done with the attach. This attach, if successful, will make your program start running and do whatever you asked it to. However, if you fail to attach the BPF skeleton, at this point, you should destroy it to make sure that it is not doing any harm to your system. At all of these steps, libpf does tell you if you have managed to do the operation successfully or if there were an error, or if there was an error. And if there is an error, you should handle it gracefully. Here you can see an example. We do the open, and if the open fails, we do a print and we return. So attempt to do that normally, as it will be very useful for your own applications. So I believe that this has been a helpful introduction to libpf with a small example on how to use it. If you wish for more guides or for more things, please have a look at their official documentation and their videos, or have a look at Honey Potion or my other videos that are already on this channel about this topic. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.